Hello, Shameless Squad. Happy Monday, Mental Health Monday. Okay, let's spill the shameless tea and the shameless truth about the shame actions that you need to watch out for because these are really embedded into so many different areas of our life, okay? And so this is going to be a brief list. I will do more about shameless communication versus shameful communication, just all the damn things, babe. But for those of you that are new, hit subscribe, like this video, and comment a heart below to help my channel grow, yo, or any questions that you might have for me here too um, that are shameless, <laughs> not sassy boo. So one of the biggest things when it comes to shame, we really need to do a better job and take accountability and action and responsibility for ourselves and others when shame is actually showing up and when it's coming up overall. So inviting shame into the room, talking about this, not running away from it or avoiding it is pretty big. And not everyone is going to actually realize when they've said something can be very shaming. And so people need to talk to people about how they come off. Um, some other pieces with this too. I have created, you know, a shame personalities and behaviors like questionnaire about how these personas show up. And so I'll probably talk more about that in the future. If you would like me to comment below, boo, because that is extensive. It's about, I don't know, <laughs> 40 plus pages of like a survey. <laughs> and maybe if anybody wants to get their hands on that, maybe I'll do a PDF document and sell that through my shop overall. But it is helpful as a resource and a really good tool to recognize and identify when these shame personas and behaviors show up. So let's talk about this. So action number one. So when people shame action number one about how this can come up when someone's shaming you, they could really question you overall, like your life, your intentions, your goals. And they want to question you to make you feel bad about yourself or to question yourself because that person might be unhappy with something in their life or something in their life maybe didn't pan out how they wanted it to and now they're trying to maybe you know question you to make you feel bad about your lives and it can come off very shaming here um so an example of this you know is to really check in with yourself your family members your friends your loved ones you know me I get questioned a lot why aren't you married why don't you have a house why don't you have a puppy or a dog how come you don't want kids whatever and it's just like it's not for me is not for me. <laughs> okay. I've already been a mother. I have already done some of these things. A house is a big responsibility. So when your girl is millionaire and billionaire out there, because we want to manifest that, right? Um, I will have help with my house or houses or whatever I freaking want to manifest in the future, right? Because I know it takes up so much work. I'm not going to commit myself to that because that is going to be something where I want to be able to live my life in a shameless, authentic way you know, and I wouldn't have as much time to be here, uh, sharing with all of you and, you know, celebrating like different things on YouTube or like when you all comment on like, Oh my God, this happened in this energy reader. Oh my gosh, thank you for this info or whatever. Like I wouldn't be able to be as present here overall. So again, like some people want to question you because they don't understand that you might be living life differently or doing things differently and that's okay. And maybe they don't need to understand. However, they don't need to question you so much on on it and it's okay to set and hold the boundaries on it too so check in with yourself check in with you know relationships families whatever and really think about that relationship inventory that I said in the previous video um with the questions and questionnaire of that in regards of like whether or not this person really feels healthy if they just keep questioning 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 me and for me like I don't question people about their life choices or how they're choosing to live their life and if I do it's probably like 10% of the time like there comes underlying layers of like shame and judgment with that and criticism with that so pay attention to it um again people who <laughs> this is another shame action that people will do so people will project their ideas onto you when you don't want that so again the examples that i just said maybe marriage kids a house a dog whatever or like another example of this was my first tattoo that i got i was i am maybe 21 or 20 or something like that and i got a little dove and a heart because my last name really means lover dove here and you know the last my favorite story ever is what my grandpa said to my 
grandma uh, before he died. <laughs> and he, this was years ago. I was like three y'all. So, um, or two, three, I don't know. I was a little, I was a little nugget. And <laughs> what he said to my grandma was she was go getting, getting her hair done at the beauty parlor. And my grandpa would swim like miles, you know, every other day at the YMCA. And she said, don't forget me now. And he said, I could never forget you, my love. And I just love that so much. And like my last name is not your basic stereotypical last name. And I, you know, it was a symbol of just because I'm a woman. And if I get married in the future, I don't have to change my last name. And if I do, I can always have this as a symbol and a representation of that, you know, um, equality and that story and all these different types of things. And I told my aunts about this and I was telling her about this, you know, one time at my other side of the family, my babcha, you know, grandma in Polish, her lake home. And my aunt was like, so you would really never change your last name if you married a man? What? And I'm like, why? Why should I? <laughs> like, my last name is fucking cool. And why would I take the last name of like some family that I don't even know what their generational trauma is, their curses are, how they operate, these different types of things? Why would I claim a name if there's certain types of attachments or wounding patterns that are just connected to that? Or if I just don't like the last name, or if I don't want to go through the freaking hoops to change bank accounts, cards, different things as a therapist, as a licensor, different types of stuff you have to literally go through everything and with all the horror stories that I've heard from cis heterosexual women and not being able to do some of this stuff and then stuff getting lost in the mail why would I put myself through that no and I was like yeah, again, it was that summer I got in that to tattoo. And I was like, that's literally what my tattoo means. Like, no. And she just could not fathom it. So she was projecting her idea because she took my uncle's name. And for those of you that don't know, I have, um, you know, five aunts on my dad's side of the family, right? And then I have seven brothers and then my mom on my mom's side of the family. So complete opposite. So all these aunts, you know, who are married, were taking someone else's last name or hyphenating or whatever. And then all these in-laws were taking like my mom's like last name, Mary that so I'm like why can't I just like carry on the family name if I want to right like this is stupid here so anyway that is just an example of projection and then people not wanting to be happy for you and sometimes people don't even realize that they can't be happy for you so it's like hey aunt like we don't need to talk about this any freaking more um another shame action here is people blaming you so underneath shame is blame for things going wrong in their life and this is called scapegoat so they use you as a scapegoat because you're an easy target for the blame here and the things going wrong in their life rather than you know, actually taking accountability and responsibility for their actions. So then they manip manipulate you to believing that you are the problem when you're not the problem. They just have the problem and you're the easy target there. So this person, when they scapegoat you, this is a defense mechanism of um, blaming and scapegoating specifically to protect their image in order to make it seem like they're better than what they did or what they didn't do. They could also be in denial of something even bigger that has happened in their life here, okay? So back in the day when I was a recruiter, everything like that, you know, I had somebody who I would go work out with, this old friend of mine, and, you know, they offered to drive me to and from work and pick me up and whatever. I was like, that's really nice. Okay, cool, and then we'll work out in the morning and then whatever. It was really nice being able to do that for some time. And then, like, the old personal trainer that my friend had been working with, you know, um said so yeah why are you coming to you know training sessions or classes or whatever and literally this friend blamed me and points to me as like well her I drive her to work like I drive her to work in the morning so now we go to work out in the morning whatever and this friend <laughs> then I have to laugh about it because it's so stupid and pathetic <laughs> like then this friend believed this lie this delusional thinking pattern and was in denial of like why well, I actually don't even know how to be honest with people here and wasn't even coming to the gym consistently with stuff and they would blame it on you know my sleep my migraines my this my that my whatever and I'm like you're just not consistent with this and that's fine you're just not ready for this and that's fine don't use me as your scapegoat though so people will do that and then make you try to believe that you're the problem in that situation when they are the problem in that situation okay um number four for shame actions here 
want to okay <laughs> people attacking you with anger to distract you so people will use this as a very manipulative tool and vice and a lot of times they might just lash out and not use emotional regulation skills and behave out of an anger response here a lot of times i see this is because people in their life did not have parents or caregivers or people to actually teach them how to regulate their emotions and their feelings. So it comes up as an impulsive response that typically occurs when the person is intentionally actually trying to like hurt you, distract you on purpose, and then manipulate and change the direction of what's happening because they feel shame and because of that they feel uncomfortable. And so sometimes for people, it's more acceptable um, to show anger as an emotion rather than other things because maybe they've dealt with a lot of shame and complex trauma and psychological emotional abuse, which if you have been watching my videos, you know that shame is psychological, um, emotional, financial, intellectual abuse. Mm, love me some lemons y'all love lemons comment one below if you do <laughs> okay let's talk about this shame action and behavior that people will do a lot of people will conceal so concealing think of it like makeup they like hide their face in the moment they might go like this and they might also go <laughs> like this or wear a hat or a hoodie or you know sunglasses <laughs> to actually hide you know from being anxious in the moments. And sometimes this can show up as like social anxiety. Sometimes this can show up as I'm going to conceal myself, look smaller because I don't actually want to be participating in what's going on. And I'm just going to choose to avoid this here. And so you might do things to make yourself feel small. Other people could be doing this to you and avoid being the center of attention so they can escape from participating and sharing their actual thoughts here. Now, this can show up in relationships. This can show up in family dynamics. This can show up in groups, group therapy, support groups, whatever. But then when people say, well, I have social anxiety, sometimes I've seen this too, where they use it as an excuse and they weaponize their mental health in order to then not participate now. If y'all know me, <laughs> we just don't use mental health diagnoses as an excuse to not grow and move forward. They help us understand things and they can be like a hat. You take them off, you put them on, you know, sometimes it happens that way. And when it comes to particular mental health diagnoses, that can really be true and valid. Now for other diagnoses, right, maybe it's not so much a hat, but you have this diagnosis, you know about it, and you know how to use it moving forward and work with different types of ebbs and flows and things. But this is basically concealing. This is used to protect themselves from any types of threats in a situation, and it's a shame response here. Other people, another one that we've talked about a little bit here, may really try to avoid shame and create a pattern with this, okay? So when people cry in situations to try to look like the victim and then twist and manipulate or flee something, run away from a situation that makes them feel uncomfortable, then they do this to bring people's guards down. And then they're going to be emotionally avoidant and not actually come back around to what the heck were we even talking about in the first place. And then they get you to do what they want you to do and believe that they are this victim here. So crying in situations, avoiding conflict is a big one here. Um, a lot of people, classic, like I have anxiety. I'm going to talk to my doctor about it and get on meds for this. And I'm so stressed around the holidays because I can't have a conversation with this person. It's not that you can't, it's that you won't here, okay? And then you avoid them you know like the plague here um and really like the threat feels bigger but it may not even be that big in reality so we tend to over exaggerate and go through thinking errors then and then like tend to sometimes make things bigger than they actually are in our heads this can also be apologizing and people pleasing tactics too can occur some people might also fawn or flee the situation because they feel so scared internally that their bodies then feel unsafe and then they feel like, oh my God, I have to be in survival mode. And so sometimes people might choose to then dissociate whether or not they know it. They will. They will. And then they avoid, you know, that situation. And then the cycle of anxiety, the response is something makes me anxious. Hashtag triggered. <laughs> okay. I avoid what I have to do next a little bit with this. And then I get temporary relief. And then when I actually have to go back to the situation, the cycle restarts and that anxiety gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need to do this. And so when you actually don't work on your shame, your stress, your anxiety, anything, it just gets bigger. And we want to be able to do this, right? 
Um, another shame action that people will do is called stonewalling. And this is stonewalling you. This is shutting you out. People can get really quiet and then they put up a metaphorical wall here. Like you feel it. You sense that energy emotionally. And they do this because they won't face their problems. And then sometimes when people stonewall, they'll get quiet. They won't say anything. They might be silent. They may shut down here, right? Other people might just completely change the subject overall. Not even go back to the other thing. Um, another shame action is people judging or criticizing your decisions in life. We kind of talked about this, but this could also come out as like gossip or saying mean things about people or even thinking about a person um, can be a mirror, you know, of what that person, if it's negative, might actually be going through in their life. If what that person thinks about themselves and they're just trying to put that on someone else to make themselves feel better. Um, and again, like I said, there's also the shame personalities and behaviors, um, which is another big tool to help spot shame overall. I may be doing some more on that on my channel here. Let me know if that would be helpful for Mental Health Monday. And also always go back and watch the three part how to heal shame when it comes to different things and how this stuff might come up and maybe, you know, track, maybe do some things where it could be really beneficial for you to take this all in one step at a time. Okay. Um, so let let me know what questions that you have down in the comments below. Be shameless, yo. <laughs> and make sure to like this video, help my channel grow. Show me some love, especially if you learn something new. I don't know how these mental health Mondays are going to go, yo. So definitely help me grow and share this with anybody that may just need to hear some of this information and understand and have some tangible examples too, again. So make sure to watch the other videos too, as long as they are helpful for you, boo, or come back to this anytime that you are feeling kind of lost and you need some validation in regards of like, wow, that was shaming. Yes, yes, I just needed to hear this again, right? And sometimes then it's important for you to validate yourself and be like, yes, that is shame. Yes, now I recognize it. Yes, I know it. And then you build more confidence in that way. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here again. Stay tuned for more. Stay shameless.